is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 through 32. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. God bless the reading. Good morning, farmers. This is the second Sunday in a row we have a scripture about seeds and planting and stories from Jesus. Can you tell who the target audience was? Do you feel far from that target audience? Some of you, yes. Some of you, no. Yeah. Some grew up in more agricultural areas. Some grew up with concrete all around. The plantings were flowers or things you watered inside or cactus you put inside because you forgot to water things. Lots of us have different experiences with seeds, but for the second Sunday we have a seed and we're talking about how it grows. Then today another seed analogy with a mustard seed. So let's just deal with one seed at a time, right? The first one. Jesus says the kingdom of God is as, if it is as if someone would scatter seed, then go about their business, and that seed grows, and the person enjoys the harvest, even though they have no idea how it grew. For those who are worried about understanding God, for those who are concerned about getting it all correct, relax. Relax. Jesus tells us growth is important. Life goes on rising and sleeping. The earth cares for us day after day. And when the good stuff shows up, regardless if we understand how we got it, if we feel like we deserve it, grab a hold. That's the good stuff. Quit worrying about if you deserve it. Quit worrying about if you understand it. God's going to grow stuff. God's going to grow us regardless. You don't have to understand how the sun works scientifically to appreciate the beauty of a sunset, right? You don't have to understand how love works to find yourself deeply, madly in love with someone or to have life-giving relationships. You don't have to understand how love works to welcome a child into your life, do you? And you don't have to understand how God works, or even if God is, for your faith to grow. All you have to do is go about your business, rising and sleeping. Then, when you see it, when you feel it, grab a hold, claim the harvest that is around you. Now about that second seed. Jesus says the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, the smallest of seed that grows into the biggest shrub. But Jesus goes on to say a little bit more. It's not just about a small seed being a big plant. Size isn't really the issue here. It's more the surprise. It's the exceeding of expectation. It's the idea that it does more than we imagined it might do. Not only does it grow, not only is it larger than expected, it provides shelter and shade for the birds. It gives back. It doesn't just grow, it gives back in service to the creation for which it came. 
when we see what has grown in our lives, we give thanks for it. We grab a hold of it, but then we find ways to share, to serve, to give back. When we see how much we have grown in our lives, we give thanks for it. We grab hold of it, but then we find ways to share, to care, to serve others. When we see growth, when we see growth, it's interesting. Jesus has this assumption that we will grow. In all of these parables, whether it's the sower last week or these seed stories today, the assumption is we will grow. There's never an assumption from Jesus that we will achieve immediate enlightenment. Even when Jesus renames Simon as Peter and says, you are the rock in which I'll build my church, he knows Peter's going to deny him in the future. He knows Peter's got to hit bottom before he grows up. He knows it's a projection of what he will grow to be, not what he will magically appear to be all of a sudden, just because he said the magic words. Jesus doesn't have an assumption that we will be perfect, else why would we ever need to talk about grace? The only assumption is that we will grow. So often we hear a lot of church speak about following the right rules. Sometimes we hear about the right beliefs. Sometimes we even hear about the right politics. Following these rules will get God to love you. Do or don't do these things and God will bless you. Vote this way and God will forgive you. But our scripture today suggests that God is growing us all the time, not worried about an immediate 180 degree shift. God's worried about us growing. Our scripture suggests that God is growing us and it's less about us really than God because God's going to do the growing of us whether we claim it or not. God's going to keep trying to shift us and change us if we accept it or not. God is going to keep being at work in our lives, putting issues that will change our perspective, change our hearts, break our hearts open so that tears might flow for those around us. And the more we see tragedy in our world and the more we steel ourselves to it, the more we are going to be consumed by the tragedy around us because God's not done shaping us yet. The expectation is that we will grow. Our scripture tells us that we are growing. And believe it or not, we will exceed everyone's expectations including our own, including our own. So the question in these parables, the question in most of Jesus' teaching isn't, are you saved? The question isn't, are you a Christian? It's really not even, do you believe in God? Because we've just been told God's working on us whether we believe it, recognize it, or see it or not. The question from this parable really is, how are you growing? How are we growing? How are you growing? Some of us are trying to adapt to a new chapter in our life. It seems like the rules have changed, all the parts look different, and we've got to find a new reality. Some of us are trying to forge new relationships. We found ourselves lonely. We found ourselves separated. We might be in a new place or in a new season of life. Maybe we're young and walking into next chapters. Maybe we're older, reflecting back on chapters gone past and wondering who else we will get the blessing of loving in these days ahead. Some of us are trying to reinterpret our faith in a new context. God's plopped us down in a new place and a new understanding, and we're trying to figure out how God and this stuff go together. Some of us are trying to reconcile the contradictions of our childhood faith, the things we heard and believed, but now our mind, our heart, and even our study of Scripture cause us to go back and reevaluate. Some of us are trying to heal from hurts of the past, some inflicted by people, some are harms that have been passed down like family heirlooms, some even committed by the church. Others are trying to understand how their sexuality and their spirituality might go together, how what's going on in their body and in their heart 
matches what Scripture, the Spirit of God within them, and all the people they love keep saying. Others are trying to negotiate cultural expectations and figuring out where God really fits in. And boy, it gets confusing when they both say the opposite thing while saying the same thing. Others are trying to get their head and their heart on the same page. Others are reading scripture and reading one thing, but also remembering what they grew up with. They're remembering the love they experienced as a child in a faith community, but also the condemnation and hate they've experienced from the same people. They're trying to put their head and their heart together as they try to come up with a faith that calls our leader rabbi, but also asks us to change our hearts. Our teacher and our Lord trying to put those pieces together. None of this is easy. None of it's easy. And none of it happens quickly. You remember the seed grows over time, rising and going to sleep rising and going to sleep day after day, and the creation around them is at work. The creation around us is a partner. Whether that creation is paved over, well manicured and landscaped, or rough and rugged terrain, the people around us are also part of the creation. It's working on us. God is a partner all around us, often unseen. But as we go about our business, as we rise and go back to sleep, God keeps growing us, keeps shaping us. So imagine, if you will, if God's going to grow us, regardless of what we do, if God's going to keep trying to work on us, what if, what if we joined the partnership? What if just sitting idly by and waiting on it to happen? What if resenting God for the change around us? What if pushing back and saying, oh God, do I really have to try to love that person? Oh God, do I really have to answer this difficult question in my life? Yes, I believe that my eternal life, my spirituality, and all the concepts of salvation I've heard from the church, I believe they're pretty darn important, but I'd really just rather sit back and see what happens. I'll put a lot of investment into my fantasy football team. I'll put a lot of investment into my financial profile. I will put a lot of investment into who's going to be the next royal in another country that we seceded from because I'm really curious. But the faith said, I'll just check out. Now, I think I know who the next bachelorette's going to be based on the contestants this season of The Bachelor. I think I know they're prepping me for. But the faith stuff, I don't know if I've got time to invest in that. We have so many things to distract us whether it's celebrity weddings or cat videos, whether it is the pressures we put on ourselves that no one else is worried about, or the things we use to distract, the addictions we find to numb, the routines we go through to avoid what's next. What if, instead of sitting back Instead of going through the motions, instead of pouting about what's not happening in our lives, we became partners in the growing. What if we set some goals for ourselves as willing students and chose which courses we wanted God to lead us into? Talked to God together about picking a major in this next chapter of life. Named our edges, our growing edges, and said, God, I'm not real good at this part of my life. Can we grow there? God, I would really love to be better at this. Can we grow there? God, this really hurts. Can we grow here? What if we owned our edges, prayed, God, meet me here, worked, read, studied, questioned, prayed, questioned, doubted, worried some more, worked some more, read some more, talked to others, invited a conversation, a classroom of faith, of those we love, of community, of those who are the same, those who are really different, those who we trust and maybe risk some new voices in our lives. What if we owned our edges? Instead of worrying about them being perfect and polished, instead of worrying about where we've made mistakes, instead of worrying about 
what other people say about our level of arrival spiritually, what if we just went about our business loving others, loving God, and loving ourselves enough to be partners in the growing? Amen.